I bought nearly every woodworking tool at Wend offers, and today we're gonna find out if these insanely cheap tools are worth your money. I'm setting up a second budget-friendly shop with nothing but the cheapest equipment. This all started a few weeks ago when we bought the cheapest tools on Amazon, and one of them was a circular saw for only $39. I was blown away by the quality, and many of you commented saying when make some great stuff. So today, we're gonna put that to the test. I'm taking a huge gamble by setting up an entire shop with a single lesser-known brand. I'm gonna rank each tool from one to five stars, and this video is brought to us by Squarespace. You ready, Daniel? Let's do this, Dave. This is gonna be fun. We're gonna start off strong with the Wen Benchtop Drill Press. I went with the smallest one that they had because floor space is gonna be a premium here in this budget-friendly shop. It's only got two inches of travel, which isn't very much. If I ever need to drill perfectly straight holes further than that, I can always get it started here on the drill press and then finish it off by hand like your mind. Right before we hit record, I wanted to, it's got, okay, it's got five speeds, and I wanted to look at the belt system, and when we, we took the, the knob off, part of the inside parts flew out, and I can't figure out how to put them back in there. We're starting off on, on the wrong foot here, but I don't need this freaking knob anyway, so all good. To be honest with you, I never, ever change the belts on my drill press. I know I should. I'm a lazy woodworker. I just want to get things done. So I doubt that I'll ever open that back up again. But if you come in and take a look, you got five different speeds by moving the belt on the different pulleys. Simple as that. That's how most drill presses work. So this loosens up right here. And then you can just set that where you want it. Tighten that down. The base is cast iron, so it's pretty heavy. It ain't, it ain't going nowhere. This was $103.97. Wen has no idea who I am. I paid for all of these tools with my own money. So I, if it sounds like I'm being picky about things, it's because I am looking for things to nitpick. I w At first glance, they all seem high quality. They all seem well built. So I am looking for things to criticize. And here is one thing that might sound a little nitpicky, but the spring back on this guy, it is, it's, it's pretty powerful in not a good way. If you, if you let go, this will smack on your knuckles and, and hurt. My other drill presses, my bigger drill presses, not like this at all. So you just gotta be careful. I think the speed is actually a little fast than what I normally like. Put that down one. Then we'll put this down. One. Ah, yeah, that's much better. Yeah, I like that. Everything is on a five-star rating today. Five-star means absolutely would recommend. One-star means do not buy. I'm pretty happy with it. Crazy spring tension there. More than what needs to be there. The knob fell off. Those are things that don't really matter when you're buying a budget drill press. So. Four stars. Up next, we have the Benchtop Bandsaw. This was $165.32, which is a steal, I think, for a bandsaw like this. It does seem to be well built. This is the sixth bandsaw I've ever owned. My very favorite bandsaw of all time is the Rikon 10 305. And this is very similar to that. Although, I will say, on the Rikon that I have, which is, I think that one's like $350. So it's like over twice as much as this. I'm not doing my math correctly. The table setup, it, uh, all the little knobs on the back and underneath on the Rikon are more of a higher quality than what you've got here. Like this is metal, but these plastic knobs, they do feel cheap. And you see how it's all, it, it, yeah. That's where you're saving money by buying these budget tools. But once it's locked down, you're good to go. 
So it's just, it's little things like that that just kind of bug me. Very first thing I do when getting a new tool, I swap out for a decent blade. So I got a Timberwolf blade that I just put in there. So what I've noticed is you got the silver wheel, but on the silver wheel is the black tire. You got the black blade and the black background. It is so hard to see what you're doing. And on my Rikon, it's got the white top. So it's a lot easier to see what's going on. It's just, it's those little things that just kind of bother me. And and you got some cheap plastic knobs that again that's where you're saving money that is a it's a metal top it's not like super heavy duty cast iron but it's good enough for a budget chop it's probably good enough for you i don't know if you can see this on camera but we got three guide bearings on top as well as three guide bearings underneath that's a cute little motor. It does feel well made except for those plastic parts that we mentioned earlier. I think you call that a rack and pinion and it does kind of feel cheap. It feels like it's grinding and then there's a lock on the back. Not as high quality as the Rikon that I have. Of course, I'm gonna compare these super cheap tools to the really expensive tools that I have. That's just, it's, it's just what I know. I'm letting you know what the difference is. And it's the little things. But the most important thing is, can it cut wood? Sounds good, sounds all right. Comes with a halfway decent fence. Dust collection seems to be good. Nine inches is the throat capacity from here to here, which pretty good for a little benchtop bandsaw. The cutting height is much smaller than my Rikon. This is about three and three quarters of an inch. My Rikon is four and five eighths. A lot of times on these lower powered bandsaws, you're not cutting four inch thick material, but I know my Rikon can, as long as you've got a sharp blade. Daniel just said, yep, it's a bandsaw. And is it, it does what it's supposed to do. Minus the cheap knobs, it does what it's supposed to do. It's got a good metal casing. It seems well built. I, I say well built, I mean 90% of it is well built and then it's got cheap knobs. The door doesn't line up perfectly. It, uh, panel gaps, is that what they call that in the automotive industry? The panel gaps are not even all the way around. But again, this was $165.32, worth every single penny. It does what it's supposed to do. Again, I'm not going to rate every single tool four stars, but this one gets four stars. I'm saving the table saw for last. I'm saving that for last because the table saw is like the centerpiece of your workshop. And I really, really wanna just go through it with a fine tooth comb. So up next randomly is the planer. I have not even turned it on yet, but right off the bat, the build quality of this is phenomenal. It feels high end. There's no cheapness, there's no cheap knobs like on the other two tools. There's nothing to complain about. It's like high impact plastic, everything is metal. It feels super sturdy. It's got a nice paint job, that's what we're all looking for. I have the DeWalt, I think this is like the 735 or whatever, and this is like $200 more. So this Wen planer is $374.99. I think they have four different planers. They have the 12 and a half, and then the 13, and that's uh, how, how wide of a board you can go through here. I always find the wider that you can afford, the better. E even if it's just a half inch, you're gonna find yourself like, I wish it would plane a little bit wider. And then you have a choice of cutting heads. You can get one with two blades, one with three blades, or you can go with a spiral cutting head. And I always suggest going with the spiral cutting head. It just leaves a, just a, buttery smooth finish and it's so much quieter because planers can get super loud. I opted for the single speed. There is a higher version than this that is a two speed. I never change the speed on my planer. So this single speed, I saved a few bucks by getting the single speed. I don't know what, what this means, but the DeWalt is so much heavier than this. This is still pretty, it took two of us to get it up here, but the DeWalt is insanely heavy. It's got the rollers on top and Daniel and I were just discussing, neither one of us liked the rollers on top. He took his off, his. I took mine off of my Rikon that's in the other shop. Not a single thing to complain about with the build quality. Gotta plug it in, don't we?
It's not feeding it through. Mind blown. I just got done talking about the quality of this. It's missing parts. There's no, there's no feeder in there. So the cutting head is cutting. You can see right there, but it wasn't feeding through. So I went through all the instructions to make sure there wasn't like a, some sort of lock that I had to remove. We started taking it apart. It's missing parts. And we're looking on the manual here and it doesn't have these, these sprockets and it's totally missing this drive chain. Just absolutely not there. So the feed, it's unplugged. The feeders, they spin freely, but you can feel where that sprocket is supposed to go and where that chain is supposed to go, but it is not there. My mind is blown that this left the factory like this. Some of these WEN tools I ordered on Amazon. Everything was ordered on Black Friday. Some on Amazon, one on Home Depot, and then the rest were ordered from the WEN website directly. This came from the WEN website directly, which means it left their factory, their warehouse, missing the whole drive chain for the feeders. You know what? I said earlier one star was the lowest. This one's zero stars. Fuck. It's such a high quality machine. I'm so disappointed. Zero stars. Zero stars. All right. So up next is their joiner. Now here's the thing. This is this is my second shop, so it's not. I don't have a bunch of wood to work with. The plan was to plane this board down and then joint one of the edges on here and then joint the other edge on the table saw. This was supposed to be a whole like we're going to do, go through the whole milling process, but not having a planer is screwing that up. Actually, nope. Let's run this through the DeWalt real quick so we can actually do this right. All right, let's, oh man, this is, this is ruining my day. You just put it away. I know. The thing weighs like a thousand It weighs a thousand pounds and we've moved it four times today. I'm sorry, Dale. I've already fired off an email to when we'll see what they do to resolve that. I'll let you know at the end of the video, the outcome, it's just so disappointing. You know what's not disappointing? My website and today's video is brought to us by Squarespace. How'd you like that transition, Daniel? It was pretty good. That was good. I've been using Squarespace for a long, long time, and I just relaunched a brand new website. It's actually the same website, just a whole new look. And it was super easy to do. Squarespace has a ton of beautiful templates to get you started. Everything is just drag and drop. And with my redesign, all I had to do was just change a few colors and it changes throughout the entire site. And then I'm just kind of moving things around, playing with the placement and everything, copying and pasting. It is that easy. I'm not even joking. My new website looks fantastic. All of that is possible because of the Fluid Engine. And if you want, you can even have a password protected members only section of your website. Damn, what year is it? It's 2024. 2024. Need a Squarespace. Happy New Year. You should treat yourself with a new Squarespace website. So, Visit squarespace.com and when you're ready to launch, visit squarespace.com slash make something for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thank you Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. No thanks to this planer, which has ruined my day. Do you hate when now? I don't hate when. I'm just very disappointed. That's all. That's always worse when your parents are like, I'm not mad at you. I'm just disappointed. Your significant I, yeah, oh, your significant other, yeah. Ah, when, come on, come on. So after cheating with the DeWalt, we can now move on to the joiner here. They have a couple different joiners that you can get. They have a six inch and an eight inch. I've had a six inch joiner before. I rarely use it. When a joiner is that small, 
there's other ways to do what you need to do. So I went with the eight inch because not only is it wider this way, but it also has the wings and it makes it just a more useful joiner. The fence was square out of the box. It didn't really have to do anything. The build quality of it, perfectly fine. It's got a nice flat top. I mean, we didn't check for perfect flatness. I don't have a way to do that right now, but it seems flat. Again, this seems well built. The last time I said that, things went south pretty quick. Does it have a heel cut into? This does. So if you ever have the option of joiner blades or a spiral head, always go with the spiral head. You'll get a much cleaner cut and it'll be much quieter. Now this doesn't have nearly the amount of cutters as my Rikon, but this was $374.99. So compare this to a multi-thousand dollar joiner, uh, this should be good. The only real complaint that I have with this guy is everything is well built. It's again, it's the, it's the cheap knobs. So you got these guys back here for the fence. I just don't like these style of knobs, but again, this is so much cheaper than the Rikon back home. I noticed those knobs will interfere with each other too. Yeah, good point. They do interfere with each other. Yeah, and they you gotta. Points, yeah. yeah. So I am not a. I, I I don't like these types of knobs for this stuff. I like. Yeah, I like. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? They work. They just feel cheap. That is all. And sometimes you got to do the thing where you like up, use pull it out, and then turn it, and then yeah. Yeah, it leaves a super nice clean cut. Like very happy with that cut. I'm going to assume that it is straight because that's what a joiner is supposed to do. I don't have a straight edge to check that. I probably will have to calibrate the beds. You have to do that anytime with a, with a joiner. So would I recommend this joiner? Absolutely. Four stars. I'd give it five. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna give everything four stars. It's just the freaking cheap knobs. If it weren't for the cheap knobs, I'd give this a five star. Up next is the Wen miter saw. There is a, there's a few options for their miter saws: the 10 inch and the 12 inch. I think for most woodworkers, you're just gonna want the 10 inch. I, I there's just no reason to have the 12 inch blade. I also want the single bevel and not the double bevel. The bevel allows you to tilt this. That is an operation that I never ever use in a miter saw. It's for crown molding. I do fine woodworking. That's, I don't do contractor work. So that is a feature that I don't need. And it's a sliding kind. So I believe you can cut like up to 12 inches with this. There are some plastic parts on here. Again, the knobs kind of feel cheap, but that is okay for this particular saw because they're not, it's not something that you are going to use a lot. Got a rubber handle. The handle feels super nice. So nothing I'm mad about. It feels well built. It's got a little dust bag, which eventually will come off and we'll hook this up to regular dust collection. It does have a little hold down here, which, uh, yeah. The hold down's cheap. Fairly light, light enough where I can pick it up and move it from bench to bench. I don't know that this particular saw will have a permanent home in here. In my other shop, mine is permanently attached to the bench and then it has wings. It makes it easier for me to use. And this, this is a small space, so it'll probably just have its own little table that I can wheel out from the wall. So, there's not much else to talk about. I'm happy with the build quality, nothing I'm too mad about. Again, cheap knobs. What I need to do is get over the cheap knob thing. I really need to get over that. Let's cut some wood. I am gonna use a stock blade today, but I will no doubt change the blade to a finer teeth crosscut blade just to give me those nice crisp cuts when I'm when I'm using this. So like the blade right now is great for contractor work. You're cutting molding, you're what are you're working on your house, but for fine woodworking, you want you want a good blade in there. So I will definitely swap that out eventually. Ooh, 
It shuts off really fast, a lot faster than the one I have at home. I like that, that's a nice safety feature. I didn't make any adjustments and that is perfectly square. Let's make one more cut at 45 degrees. It's got positive stops at 90 and 45. And yeah, I think that's dead on 45. We made two cuts, the dust collection with the bag, no good. I mean, look at look at it. This is a this is a mess. So the dust collection with the bag, definitely no good. You're gonna wanna you're gonna wanna do something about that. Ain't nothing I'm mad at except the knobs. Four stars, dude. I'm not gonna rank everything at four stars, but it's four stars. Maybe you got a knob fetish. Four stars means yes, I would recommend it. Yes, it's going to do exactly what I want it to do. Zero stars means it's a piece of shit and it should be shipped back to the company. Four stars is good. Five stars is perfect. I don't know that you're going to get a five star on a, on a budget tool. Next. Up next, we have the oscillating spindle sander. I was going to get their 12 inch disc sander and then their spindle sander separate. And then I realized that they sell this, which is basically both of them in one tool. Space is a premium, so I got this guy. So it's got a combination of a metal top, not cast iron, and a plastic bottom. But there's nothing wrong with the quality about those particular things. It does seem well built. I have a suspicion that the sanders from Wen and the sanders from Harbor Freight come from the same factory. Just a suspicion. I'm not sure where, I don't have, I don't have any inside sources, but they look exactly like, that's a common thing with tools. A lot of, like you'll get a Jet or a Delta, comes from the same damn factory. It's just got a different paint job on there. This is $197.60. I bought all these one tools on Black Friday, so I got a deal on some, so the prices might be a little bit higher now. Before I use this, you can swap out the spindle by taking this cheap knob off. This comes out, then this comes out, and then this big, guy goes in here like this. Looks like we gotta align the belt. It's got a dust collection port. It has a spot for all of the accessories built right into it, which is nice, but all of them these days have that. I think it's 4.5 stars. <laughs> I think it's 4.5 stars. Uh, there's nothing really to complain about. The should be heavier. It looks like it should be heavier. That is the thing. That's some of the problems that I have with the sanders that I have is it, unless you have them bolted down to the bench, they want to move. So yeah, you are right. I wish it was heavier. I wish it was cast iron. I wish I was a little bit taller. Wish I was a baller. <sighs> okay. Four stars. Up next are the routers. I got a little trim router and then I got a big plunge router. I like to have two routers in my shop. I like the trim ones for some fine control and then you need a plunge router so you can plunge in and do pockets, something that's a little bit bigger, something that you can get dust collection on. I actually like to have three routers in the shop, one mounted in a router table. Well, we're not ready for that just yet here at this budget shop. So. Uh, I played around with them for a little bit. I haven't used them. I just playing with the knobs, setting depth stops and, and things like that, just trying to get to know them. And I will say that uh, the this plunge router feels pretty good. Got the safety and the on off right there. That is in a really good spot. And then there's the lock right there, which I can easily reach with my fingers. It comes with an edge jig and a dust collection port, which clamps on right here. I'm not gonna use them today. I just wanna use them as routers. And then we got speed control, and then you can set your, your depth stop here. All that is great. So I'm gonna start off with the little palm router. This feels really good. Uh, it's got a nice rubber feel on there, that high impact plastic. I have a super, super, super cheap, like $10 Amazon router. This thing sucks. It just, you can hear it bog down when you go to use it. And then the plastic stop on here is going to break, no doubt. This has got metal parts and uh, yeah, you like that? Yeah, nothing that I'm mad about there. Soft start. If I'm being a little nitpicky on the trim router, the on-off switch, a little small. I, re I, I really do like a, a bigger switch so I can quickly turn it off. 
It takes a long time to wind down. My DeWalt, you shut it off, it shuts off instantly. I love that feature about my DeWalt. So I wish it had that. But other than the tiny little switch and then the long time it takes to shut down, no other complaints. The big guy. Ooh, it's got power. I can feel it. Yeah, uh, no complaints about that at all. I mean, there's some uh, cosmetic blemishes on here. That's from the finishing process. That's like a cheap metal. A nice soft start. It feels super powerful. I, I have a very healthy fear of routers. What I like about both of these is a one tool bit change. So it has a button that you can press down and then just use one wrench and the same with, with the little trim one. So the plunge router was $83.81 and then the trim router was $49.07. So very affordable on the lower end of routers, but not as cheap as you can go. And with something like a router, please, don't go as cheap as you can go. Four stars. You think I'm, you think I'm fucking with you. I'm not, this is a four star. Up next is the track saw. It wasn't available as a package, so I got the tracks from Home Depot, that was the cheapest place, and then I got the actual track saw from the WEN website. And man, I am, the quality of the tracks is very comparable to the Festool track saw that I have at the other shop. When I pulled these out of the package, I was like, damn! It's really nice. The one thing is the grips on the bottom, it's got that like spongy type stuff that collects dust. You see that? That sucks. Now this does have some gripping power, but I could see as it's getting more dusty, that's gonna be an issue. That's the, ah. Uh, uh. I was like, oh, maybe we got a five-star tool here. And then, ah, that. If that was different, I would be so happy. So out of the box, there is a tiny bit of play, which is totally cool because it is totally adjustable. If you remember from the I Bought the Cheapest Tools on Amazon video, I got the Craig AccuCut Circular Saw Guide. There was a lot of play and no adjustability. It was very disappointing and I wanted to throw the whole system in the trash. On that Craig system, you take a regular circular saw and then you put the track, you put the base on the bottom of that and it rides in the track. I'm going to always suggest a dedicated track saw over a circular saw jig because it just makes your life so much easier. It rides really, really nice in the track. Now you can get different size tracks. I got this two piece so I could do a full length of an eight foot sheet of plywood. And then one piece will give me a cross cut on, one, on, on, the, on, the, on the four foot side of the plywood sheet. As long as it just turns on and cuts like it's supposed to, I am gonna be super happy. The first time I cut this, you're gonna see some plastic flying because it's got this zero, I'm not sure what to call this, but this zero insert that sticks out a little too far and that's on purpose. So when you cut it, then you'll get, you'll get that perfect edge that will meet up with the blade. And I decided to not go battery powered anything in this shop. I wanted to go budget. So we, we got a cord to deal with. We'll have a hose to deal with, but dude, that just, that's like, it's like riding on rails. That is so nice. The only complaints that I have about this yeah. is the grip on the bottom of the track. Yes, it did work fine, but I can see you're gonna have to clean them to keep that grip. Not something I have to deal with with the Festool. And the Festool ones are slightly longer. So when I am cutting the, cross cutting the plywood, I don't have a lot of overhang on the front and the back. I still was able to make a full cut, but you're, you're back and way off the track when you're doing that. I'm really, really happy with that. Four stars. I've already reviewed the circular saw in the I Bought the Cheapest Tools on Amazon video. Four stars. I've already reviewed the detailing palm sander. Five stars. 
You heard me right. And the grand finale, the table saw. For me, the table saw is the centerpiece of my workshop, just like many other people. This is the most expensive tool that we are reviewing today at $469.15. I do think it is worth every penny. That sounds like a lot of money, but for a table saw like this, I think it's a very good price. Of course, you can get cheaper saws, but you're gonna get a cheaper saw. I actually have been using this for a few weeks now, so I've got some good tool time on the saw. We used it in the six easy woodworking projects video that we released a couple weeks ago. Very happy with it. I do have a few complaints and I do have a few things that I absolutely love about it. This is actually my third contractor saw and my sixth table saw overall. I can't believe I'm six table saws old already. So what I'm saying is trust me when I say I like something or I don't like something. I have a three horsepower saw stop in my main shop and I absolutely love that saw. Best table saw I have ever used, not only because of the safety feature, just because of the build quality and the accuracy. That is highly recommended, but it is also very expensive. This is much more affordable. When it has a couple of different table saws you can get, I couldn't see myself getting anything smaller than the 10 inch blade table saw. Two features this saw has that my saw stop doesn't, a one tool blade change. So there's this little red button here and that locks the blade and then you can use one single wrench to remove the blade. Saw stop takes two wrenches. The other thing, it's got a built in outfeed support. I mean, it doesn't go out very far, but my, I've had a DeWalt contractor saw and I've also had the saw stop contractor saw. It doesn't do that. Fence moves pretty easy and then you can lock that down. It came parallel to the blade, thank goodness, because I'm not sure how I would fix that if it wasn't parallel, but it came perfectly parallel to the blade. And it's got this little flippy thing for small pieces. Again, we're nitpicking, but it is loud. It is much louder than my three horsepower saw stop. I don't know why. Maybe it's just because the saw stop is super heavy and sturdy, but that saw is whisper quiet. The only thing you hear when that saw is on is the dust collection and the blade cutting through the air. When you turn this on, you have to have ear protection on just to have it on, even before cutting wood. It is insanely loud. I don't know why. One of the major gripes that I have about this is the fence lock is down here and this is really sharp right here. It is a hand scratcher every time you go to lock the blade. Of course, you can reach over to the other side to do that. I am probably gonna have extension wings, which means I'm going to have some bloody knuckles from that. Huge gripe. Setting it to an exact angle down to a 10th of a degree is very difficult because you'll lock it and it's not quite there and you got to move the whole thing and usually you end up overshooting. I wish there was a dial that I could turn and then the whole thing would move. So that does kind of suck. Blade up and down, nice and easy. Big old safety stop switch, I do like that. The miter gauge that came with the saw, absolute pure hot garbage. That's the case with most miter gauges with most saws. I couldn't even find it. I think I already threw it away. I replaced it with a higher end one. Buying a higher end miter gauge will greatly increase the accuracy of your saw, the repeatability of your saw, and just make your saw more pleasurable to use. I also need to make a crosscut sled for this. I haven't done that yet, but that will, that will allow me to cut small parts, keeping my hands away from the blade, do some cross cuts without the miter gauge. The table saw is like the centerpiece of most people's workshops because there's just so many jigs that you can make for it. I love that the miter gauge slots are the T-slots so things don't fall out. It is a well-built machine. I highly recommend it. If you want to see this in use, check out the six easy woodworking projects that we did with us a couple weeks ago. Five stars. You scratched your hand. Four stars. <laughs> Dang it, I forgot about that. It is, it is highly recommended though. This is uh, the track saw, probably my favorite tool that we reviewed today. This is number two. Let's talk about the planer. 
I'm a little alarmed that the planner that I ordered directly from Wen was shipped to me without the whole drive chain assembly. I ordered everything on November 24th and then tried everything out on January 2nd and then emailed them that very same day. I immediately got an autoresponder saying they would get back to me in one to five days. 10 days later, I had not heard back from them. So on January 12th, I followed up. They responded four days later on January 16th, saying they will look into it. Two days after that, on January 18th, I got another email asking for the serial number to see if they accidentally reboxed it after a repair. It is now January 20th, 18 days after I first contacted them. It looks like they're going to fix the issue. I can't imagine a world where a company wouldn't make this right, but this has taken a very long time. I'll keep you posted.